You are a very consistent person. Now stick with us because you might be saying, uh, actually, I'm not a very consistent person, but we're here to tell you that you are consistent. You might just be consistent about the wrong thing. And today, really, we want to talk about two biblical truths about consistency. So if you don't know who we are, if you're new here, welcome to our channel, Ruth and Casey. I'm Ruth. And I'm Casey. We're a mother-daughter team and we talk about all things healthy Christian living. Why do we say that you are a consistent person or that I am a consistent person? Because we are creatures of habit. We are, <laughs> we could say it like we are creatures of consistency, right? And you know, we often use the example of like drinking coffee. Both of us are extremely consistent <laughs> with drinking coffee every morning right and right. maybe you are too or maybe you do tea or something yeah but you probably have your morning routine your thing yeah so I know that as soon as I wake up I think oh good coffee yeah I already have that in my mind and it's like I'm excited to get up and have a cup of coffee that is so consistent the only time that you miss it is if you're sick. Exactly. Right? Like, yeah. that's it. And, and you have I, to be pretty sick to I, miss I was it. just going to say, I know I'm pretty sick when I don't have my morning coffee. Totally. Me too. <laughs> Another thing that I'm really consistent about, if you've been here watching us for any length of time, is drinking my water. That's one thing, a good habit that I have that I'm very consistent about. Another consistent habit, a healthy habit that I am extremely consistent about is getting out and walking. Mm -hmm. I love walking. I love being out in nature. I love to see around me. I like to see what's going on. I love to see the cars and the people going by. But I love to walk because it makes me feel better. And so I've gotten into the healthy habit, a very consistent habit for me all throughout the year. But you might be consistent about different things, right? Maybe uh, one thing that you are consistent about is that every Friday after your work week is over, maybe you're hitting the drive through on your way home. Maybe it's a pizza, family, movie night. That's what a lot of people are consistent with. Yeah, on a Friday, Friday night. night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so think about your life and think about the things that you are consistent about. And a way that like you can kind of figure it out is if somebody that knows you well were to say, oh, <laughs> this is what Casey would be doing at, you know, eight o'clock on a Friday morning or yeah or Sunday morning you know that you're going to church you know you're going to be in the coffee room you know who you're going to talk to like you just have that all planned out before you even get there you know yeah. it's a consistent habit Sunday yeah. morning I'm meeting so and so totally so tell us in the comments below we super appreciate your comments and they really help to push our videos out with the algorithm so tell us in the comments below what is something good or bad in your life that you are very consistent with okay so we've talked about some things that are like pretty good like water and exercise coffee well morning coffee is kind of neutral um depending on what you take in it <laughs> yeah i drink black coffee so i'm i think i'm okay yeah um, if you're putting like eight tablespoons of sugar in your morning yeah, coffee you might want to rethink it <laughs> or some of those nasty chemical creamers oh yeah Ugh, oh, my husband my used to drink those oh yeah, yeah he used to have so much of that i know oh, he doesn't he goodness. can't handle it at all anymore but so, so that's a good change we let's made. Let's talk about some of the unhealthy consistencies that we have. Um, and I'm going to say probably almost every one of us can relate to going to the junk food cupboard when we feel down and out or our emotions are taking over. We're just emotionally eating. So we just rush for the junk food cupboard. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I struggle with is um, eating in the evenings. I have to work very hard to be consistent at not eating junk at nighttime after my kids go to bed, yeah. right? Because it's very easy for me to just hit that junk food cupboard, you know, at nine o'clock and go, whew, made it through another day, right? <laughs> so I have to work hard at being consistent the other way and not indulging, like using self-control to not indulge in that every night of my life. Another thing that you might be consistent in is being a couch potato every evening. Like it's very easy for many of us to say, oh, it's time for our favorite show. It's time for our series, our episode, our next episode is up. Like I like to watch my next episode too, but are you consistent at that? And is that all you do? Are you just a couch potato? Yeah, that's and not... lacking all other yeah. responsibility and good, healthy things to do in your life. That's right, because I'm not saying it's not a good idea to go and watch your next episode. What I'm saying is it's 
not good if you're very consistent at being a couch potato. Yeah, where you're not cooking a healthy meal for yourself because you're just busy watching and you're not getting out for any exercise and you're not seeing anybody and you're not yeah. doing, like, that's all you're doing. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Isolating. Yeah. That's not a good healthy habit. No. So there's so many things that you and I are consistent about in our day-to-day -day living. And today, really, we want to talk about two biblical truths about consistency because it's like we said earlier we know that being consistent in the good healthy things in our life is ultimately what is going to pay off and get us to our goals that's right so the first biblical truth about consistency is that you will reap what you sow in due time <laughs> if you do not give up that's right so today we're going to read for you a passage from galatians 6 verses 7 through 9 a man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. I love what it said. It said, you know, we're going to reap at the proper time, but it also said, if we're not doing the good things or the right things, we're going to reap destruction. We don't want that. We want to do the opposite. We want to reap the good harvest. And so it's just like if you plant seeds in the ground, if you plant corn, you don't want to get thistles. <laughs> yeah. And, and thankfully, you're not going to if you plant corn because that's one of God's natural laws of, of creation. But we just want to make sure we're doing the good, healthy things so that we're reaping the benefits. Yeah, because uh, true to our example, if all you ever do is be a couch potato and you don't ever move your body and you don't ever do anything social and you don't ever like get out there and push yourself and get outside your comfort zone, you're going to reap the destruction that comes from not moving your body. And that can mean like pain in your knees. That can mean pain in your feet. That can mean gaining weight that we don't want to gain. That can mean... It can mean loneliness and just not even having a, a mental state of mind where you can live out the purpose God has for you. Yeah. Versus if we actually get out there and do good, healthy things, we're going to reap the rewards of that too over time if we don't give up. If you get out for one walk, you're not suddenly going to be in the best shape of your life. <laughs> no, it takes some consistency to get there. Yeah, you might feel good after that first walk. You might actually feel horrible because you haven't done it for a long time. But you're not going to instantly get the results. It's consistency over time of doing the good things that causes us to reap the rewards. Absolutely. So let's start with the healthy consistencies, even if we have to replace one unhealthy habit at a time. Because, you know, we can't change everything in our life drastically overnight <laughs> or else we'll just give up. Yeah. But we can do one thing at a time, one moving one step forward, because that gets us forward. Two steps forward and one step back is still forward. So what do you need to work on? What consistency can you tweak? So here's our second truth for consistency. You have to persevere. <laughs> you just read. It's in due time. But we have another scripture verse to read for you, and it's Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, and this is what it says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with endurance the race that is marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. That is just so encouraging. Like, yeah. We have to run the race well. And in fact, some versions, instead of endurance, say perseverance, right? Yeah. Run the race with perseverance. And but, like, we have to, we have to continue moving forward. Like you said before, even if it's two steps forward and one step back, we can't just quit. We can't quit the race just because something derails us or because something doesn't go our way. And I think that's so often what happens for us is like, A, we get discouraged by yeah. slow progress or B, something happens that like sends us off the deep end and we don't know how to get back up and carry it forward. And like if I think about, you know, consistency in your finances with like maybe saving money or maybe with tithing, if you think about things like that, sometimes like if you think about saving money, progress feels slow right? It does. And like month to month or week to week, it's like, why am I even bothering with this? Because I'm not getting anywhere. But over time, like if you put $20 a week into a savings account that has a good rate of return or like invest it wisely with a good rate of return 
over time, the payoff of that, like if you put that into a financial calculator and you start that at age 20, it's like multi-millions of dollars. Exactly. Right? But it's in due time. It yeah. doesn't happen the next week. Right. And so it can feel like, well, what's even the point of $20? Or you might think, well, Ruth and Casey, how am I supposed to do that? How can I stay consistent for the long haul? Mm -hmm. Well, the verse gives us the answer. Here's what it says. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. We have to be focused. We have to have a, a target. And fixing our eyes on Jesus doesn't mean just for one day. It means every day. And then we can run the race well. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes it's that progress is slow. Sometimes it's that things come our way that just totally derail us. Like if we go back to the financial example, maybe you end up in a month where it's like medical emergencies and your budget yes. just goes right out the window. And your and you, car breaks down. Yeah. And everything goes wrong. And so you fall off the wagon of savings or maybe you decide not to this month because you have so many other expenses. And then it can be so hard to get back up and keep going right the next month to put that $20 into the savings account. But we have to get up and keep running the race. We can't quit just because something came up. That's right. This verse also says that we're supposed to throw off everything that hinders. Well, if you know there's things that are in your house or I'm going to say in your circumstances that you can get rid of that is entangling you, that's holding you back. Well, maybe you need to throw it out. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like maybe if you're the couch potato and you're never moving your body, maybe hide the remote control for a while so you can't turn your television on. Or here's one. Maybe it's time to cancel your subscription so that you don't have much to watch. That's right. That's, right? A, that's a pretty harsh one. But take drastic measures yes. to be consistent to get to your goals. Because this is a commandment. We are supposed to run the race that is marked for us. God has given you a purpose. He's given us a purpose. It's there for a reason. He wants us to do what he's called us to do. So let's not let things hinder us. Yeah. And ultimately, let's stop saying that we are not consistent, right? Because the language we use about ourselves matters, right? <laughs> if I just say, well, I'm not a consistent person, so I can't do it. Well, do you think I'm going to do it? <laughs> no. <laughs> just like you. If you keep telling yourself, eh, I'm not very consistent about anything, and so I'm just going to stay this way forever, well, then you're never going to get off your butt and make something happen. You know, maybe you need something that's going to motivate you to keep running the race. Maybe it's going to be as simple as making a chart and doing a, like ticks. Maybe it's buying some stickers and giving yourself a star like yeah. you were back in school. But I mean, honestly, you have to be able to inspire, motivate yourself some in some way. Yeah. Maybe it's something else that is going to keep you moving forward but find something that's going to help you keep going exactly maybe it's a new pair of earrings at the end of a week where you made good progress maybe it's for me one of the big things is going for an almond milk latte right that gets me motivated to get done what I need to get done that's right yours is going to be different than ours but we do know that we have to keep persevering that is one of the truths to stay consistent absolutely we hope these two truths have really helped you to take away something today, to go and live out your life to the best of your ability. We wanna make healthy choices, we wanna make healthy decisions, we wanna be consistent in the good, not the bad. Yeah, and we know, like we've talked about so many times, that the Bible is like our blueprint for best living. And so the wisdom and the guidance and the principles that exist there are for our good. And that's why we really love to look to the Bible for like, healthy living, right? And that's why we talk about healthy Christian living. And in fact, if you would like to support our channel and support us, we have a membership here on YouTube where you get extra content from us, where we dive a little bit deeper into some of these topics. We get a little more personal and you can go ahead and join the membership. There should just be a button somewhere on your screen or the link will be in the description. Uh, it's very inexpensive. It's $6.99 Canadian, $5.99 US per month to join our membership. And it's just a great way for you to support us. So thanks for doing that. And I think really what we want to say is we want to encourage you here. We want you to know that it is possible to persevere. It is possible to reap the rewards of whatever your goals are when you follow the two truths of scripture for being consistent. We always like to end these videos by saying this. Remember that you are a beautiful woman chosen for greatness. 
And we believe in you.